us tonight. Come on. Happy anniversary, GCF South Metro. Let's all rise and greet one another. Happy anniversary. Today we're celebrating the goodness and greatness and faithfulness of God in our lives and in His church. Come on, let's all um, extend our hands and shake each other's hand and greet one another. Happy anniversary because today we are celebrating God's goodness. Are you ready to praise God with us? I can hear you. Are you ready to praise God with us? Okay, let's sing this to Him. Let's make this a joyful thing. For God alone is exalted and glorified. Let's sing, Lord, you are good.
us, your church, to further glorify your name by expanding your kingdom. Lord, let us be your instruments by which people will be saved. Establish your church. Glorify your name. Through us. Let me be an instrument. God who is loving, our God who is faithful and merciful and gracious and true and so much more. Lord, you truly are worthy of our praise, worthy of all honor, worthy of our worship, not only through song, not only today on a Sunday when we gather together, but in every day of our lives because you, your name, are beautiful you are wonderful you are powerful you are mighty God our creator our Lord our Savior our healer our friend our father so much more 
we thank you for how you have demonstrated your faithfulness towards us, your church, especially during those times when we were tested in our perseverance, in our faith, in our love of you. Thank you for carrying us through. Thank you that you sustained us. Thank you that you caused us to persevere for the glory of your name. We know, Lord, that you are the same God yesterday, today, and forever. So that as we look towards 2019, we will experience more of you, the same you who will never change. And we know, Lord, that you will do greater things in our midst because you are working in this world and we do not want to miss out on what you are doing globally, Lord. That's why as your people, as your church, as your witnesses, we pray that you would take us back as to why we are doing this, what we are doing. Your love compels us to do no less than to live our lives each day for you. Thank you for how you will remind us who you are and what you did that made us, or that brought us rather, to this place. Worshiping you now as our Father, as our Savior and Lord, as our friend. Yeah. 
Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. Nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. Because you stepped down from heaven to earth to prove that you love us. As a church, we now step forward to prove that we love you for all that you are, for all that you have done for us. How can we not live our lives every day for you? You are worth surrendering our all to the Lord. That's why as a church, we commit to make a stand for you in this world. You who first made a stand for us. You stood before creation, eternity in your hand. You spoke the earth into motion, my soul now to stand. You stood before my failure and carried the cross for my shame. My sin was.
Father God, we, uh, we stand before your holy presence, giving our all to you because you deserve everything. You alone are worthy to receive honor, glory, power, and blessing, and thanksgiving, and might, because you are our sovereign God, who ordained all the days of our life. You know the beginning, you know the end. You know everything that is happening in between. And we know, Father, that you love us so much that you gave your one and only Son that while we were still sinners, He died on the cross to pay for the sins that we can never repay. Thank you, Father, for the faith that you've given to each one of us. And because of that faith, because of what the Lord Jesus Christ did, we can stand before your holy presence this morning. We thank you, Father, for this divine privilege you've given to us to worship you for who you are, to be reminded that we cannot be where we are apart from your work, apart from your goodness, apart from your graciousness and greatness in our lives. You have been so good to us individually, with our families, and even, Lord, in GCF South Metro. Thank you for the past 22 years with all the ups and downs that we experience as a church, all that, we, all that we can say and declare today is that you are good, you are gracious, and you are great. We ask, Father, that your Holy Spirit will continue to move in our needs. May you meet us where we are and allow us, Father, to respond to you appropriately. Because we know that if we experience the power of your presence and the power of your word, we will be changed. Continue to give that joy and gladness in our hearts as we worship you this morning. And we pray all of these things with thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord.
Thank you, Sam and the choir. Can you uh, help me in welcoming our guest speaker this morning, Pastor John Lass. Let's join our hearts together in prayer. Lord, what a, what a joy to be here this morning to listen to your word through Pastor John. We ask, Father, that your Holy Spirit will anoint him with wisdom, power, knowledge, and words so that every word that he will be uttering, it will touch our hearts and bring change in our lives for your glory. May you be honored and glorified, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's welcome him again. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor Lito, for that prayer. I bring you anniversary greetings from your brothers and sisters from Lloydminster, Alberta, Canada. The last I checked, it was minus 22 degrees over there. A regular freezer temperature is minus 20. All right, so that's how crazy it was when I uh, left, and it is crazy to this day. Um, so thank you for uh, welcoming me, Pastor Lito. When I uh, was asked by Pastor Lito to preach today, God made me, a, a, God made me see a glimpse of what I call a full circle moment. A full circle moment. Just a glimpse, because it was an invitation, but now I'm experiencing it. For those of you who do not know, I served here at GCF South Metro 17 years ago for eight months. 17 years ago. I was a young, fresh grad from Bible College. I was assigned to be the worship leader here at a Greenos Christian Fellowship in South Metro. Pastor Neri invited me. I said yes. I had no clue what to do. All I knew how to do is to lead worship, to sing a little bit of music, and that was it. I had no clue concerning the administrative side of things. And so it became a difficult season for me because I was a kid. <laughs> I was a kid in an adult position. Those of you who are young adults, adulting right now, come on, somebody. Anybody here who's adulting right now, trying to struggle through life? Some people are struggling through adulting. And it was a really rough season for me. But God sharpened who I have become now from that situation, from that experience. And standing here in front of you 17 years later is a blessing. It's a full circle moment. This was where God started to sharpen me and to hone me and to, to polish the rough edges in me. So thank you for inviting me, Pastor Lito. You have such a great and wonderful leadership team here at Green Hills Christian Fellowship South Metro. Say, hey, let's give God a clap offering for the leadership and the passion that your leaders have for Jesus. See, having this full circle moment is a powerful reminder that God never stops working in our individual lives to fulfill his purposes in each of us. Full circle moments are times in our life where we become aware, where God makes it clear that he is the one orchestrating things in our life, things that are happening, whether it's good or bad or challenging or victorious, these are things that he is orchestrating in our lives for his glory. He is doing something in your life. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, he's doing something in your life today? Especially those of you who come for the first time here at Green Hills Christian Fellow, GCF South Metro, God is doing something. God is going to speak to you today. Having this full circle moment is a joy to me. And today I would like for you to allow God to give you a glimpse of a full circle moment in your life. Because when we are aware of the purposes of God for us, and we know that he works everything for our good and for his glory, it's easier to obey him. Can I hear an amen? It's way easier to obey him. Obedience to God, when you know your purpose in life, is less complicated. Obedience is less complicated. All the things that happen in our lives become reminders of our why. Say why. What is your why? We all should have whys. Full circle moments help us understand our why. What is your why? What I mean is, why are you here? Of all the places here in this city, why are you here at GCF South Metro today? Of all the other congregations that you could have attended, you are here. 
You chose to be here, and I believe in the sovereignty of God, and he brought you here. He brought you here because he has something good in store for you. Do you believe that? He has something good in store for you. Why? What is your why? Why are you a disciple of Jesus? Why are you a Christian? Why do you serve? Why do you give? Why? Do you have a reason for your giving, for your serving, for your disciple making, for your following Jesus? What is your why? Because the answer to the why is your purpose. The reason. Those of you who work for a company or own a company, you should know the mission statement, the why of your company. If you own a company, you should have a why for your company. Why do you exist? See, when you know the why, it'll make a huge difference how you do your job. When you know the why, it'll make a difference how you serve. When you know the why, life makes more sense. Why? A mission statement, a purpose statement is a formal summary of the aims, the values of a company, an institution, or even a person, an individual. The reason we exist, it determines a company's direction. It acts as a north star for a company or an institution or a person. That when you stray a bit away from your direction or your, your course, that north star, that reason, that why, the answer to that why, brings you back. Brings you back. What is your why? Why are you here? Why are you a disciple? Those of you who know some of the famous companies, they have their mission statements. They have reasons why they exist. Here, here's one thing. Coca-Cola. Who loves Coca-Cola here? Come on. Come, come on. Just, yeah, my dad and I, right? <laughs> By the way, my father's here. Who likes Coca-Cola? Come on. Yes, we're going to be best friends. You two, we're going to form a small group together, all right? Um, but Coca-Cola here is their mission statement, their purpose statement. This is why they exist. To refresh the world in mind, body, and spirit. <laughs> Sounds like a church, doesn't it? <laughs> and to inspire moments of optimism and happiness through our brands and our actions. So when the, the next time you drink Coca-Cola or Sprite, you say, oh, this sugar is making me happy, right? And making you giddy, plew. McDonald's, who loves McDonald's here? Come on, somebody. Come on, Big Mac lovers. Come on, Big Mac lovers. All right. To be our customer's favorite place. And here's the thing, not just a place, and way to eat and drink. Instagram. Who's on Instagram here? All right, a lot of you are on Some of y'all are lying. Who loves Instagram here? Come on. Come on, hey, I love Instagram. Every time you post something on Instagram, whether it's a story or a picture or a video, this is their mission statement. This is the reason why they exist, to capture and share the world's moments. Earlier today, I just captured one of the moments that the choir was leading, and I posted it, and the world has seen it. Instagram, Starbucks, who loves Starbucks? Oh, yeah, there's a few of you. Another small group that I can form. Yay, praise God. All right, to inspire and nurture the human spirit. Really? <laughs> one person, one cup, one neighborhood at a time. Those are their mission statements. That's their why. Say why. Turn to your neighbor and say, what is your why? <laughs> why do you even exist? <laughs> why are you a believer? Why are you a Christian? Why are you a disciple of Jesus? Luke chapter 19 we find there, at the very end of Luke chapter 19, uh, not, not the end, but the middle, where we will find there what Jesus calls his purpose statement. The reason why. His why. And so, we will read Luke 19, verses 1 through 10, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And if you can follow along with me, that would be great. This is the Word of God for the people of God today. Turn to your neighbor and say, this is the Word of God for you today. Verse 1, Jesus entered Jericho when it was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, come on somebody, who's short here? 
below five foot. Come on. (laughs) He was short. He could not see over the crowd, so he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. Say today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to complain. He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and I, if I have cheated anybody of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. And here's the mission statement of Jesus, verse 10, let's read it together. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. Let's read that again. For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. Let's read it again. For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. Close your eyes and see if you can remember that. For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. That is Jesus' why. The very reason we have Christmas is because Jesus came to seek and save the lost. The very reason he died on the cross so that he can seek and save the lost. The very reason he rose from the grave is so that he can secure a place for those whom he seeks and who will save. The very reason Jesus came is to seek and save the lost. That is where we find the heart of Jesus, to seek and to save the lost. The very name Jesus, say Jesus. What a beautiful name it is, Yeshua in Hebrew. The very meaning of that name, the Lord saves The Lord saves. Say, the Lord saves. That is his purpose. Jesus. And it wasn't given to him by Mary or Joseph. It was an angel who said to Joseph, you shall name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sin. He will save his people from their sin. That name, that beautiful name, the only name given under heaven by which man might be saved. Jesus. Say, Jesus. This is Jesus. And his purpose is to seek and to save the lost. Now, we see here in the passage we just read the beautiful picture of Jesus reaching out to those who were lost, to a particular man named Zacchaeus. Jesus was literally just a few days away from his own death on the cross when he walked through this lovely little city of Jericho. But there's one purpose that he went through there, to reach out to this man named Zacchaeus. Some of you grew up in Sunday school, and you know that this Zacchaeus wee little man was he. You know the story. You read that, and it was just a reminder for you. Some of you perhaps are thinking, I've heard this before. This is not going to make a difference in my life. (laughs) I've heard this sermon before. I've read this passage before. But it's good to be reminded of one's purpose every once in a while. In fact, it's good to be reminded of one's purpose every day. Every day you wake up on purpose and you understand why you exist. That's, it's a better way of living, don't you think? It's a better way of living. And I'm glad that this church has come back to its roots. It's coming back to its roots of making disciples of all nations, multiplying disciples, the very calling of the church of Jesus Christ. And like I said, Jesus was literally a few days away from his very own death. He walked through Jericho for this particular man. And guess what? At this point, Jesus was a very popular man. He had been preaching for the last three years all across Palestine, preaching about the coming kingdom of God, healing the sick, raising the dead, preaching the kingdom of God. And so he was famous. Why? Because every citizen of Israel, every citizen of Palestine knows about the coming Messiah. They know about the details of the coming Savior, that this Messiah, when he comes, he will establish the kingdom of Israel once again. And this kingdom will be a kingdom of peace and prosperity, something that they have all been looking forward to. Why? Because they have been under the yoke of the Roman Empire. This Messiah will set them free 
will set them free. Have you been set free by the Messiah? And so he, being a famous man, walks through Jericho. And every single citizen of Jericho comes out of their house to see this man. And who couldn't see him? Who couldn't get through the crowd? A man named Zacchaeus. Why? Because he was a wee little man. He couldn't get through the crowd. He was too tiny. He was too tiny. So he climbed up a sycamore tree. I can't help but imagine what he was wondering in his mind when he climbed up that sycamore tree. You see, Zacchaeus was a tax collector, as we read, and tax collectors back in those days, and some of you know, were traitors to their own kind. They were Jews, but they worked for the Roman Empire, and therefore they were traitors. And so if this is the man who will set the people of Israel free from the Roman Empire, this is the man who's going to take away my job. Make sense? Oh, man, this is the Jesus who will set the people of Israel free. I'm doomed. <coughs> I'm doomed. As Jesus walked and we saw in the scriptures, he stopped at that tree and called out his name, Zacchaeus. Say Zacchaeus. <laughs> Zacchaeus, you come down from there. You come down from there. Here's Zacchaeus. Afraid that he will one day lose his job because this man will overthrow the Roman Empire. <laughs> How would you feel if you met the, per the person who will overthrow the company that you work for? <laughs> the person, the very reason that you will lose your job. See, like I said, the Messiah was expected to establish a kingdom of peace and prosperity. In fact, if you study the Gospels deeper, you will notice that most of his disciples joined Jesus in his journey for the wrong reasons. Many of them did. If this is the Messiah who will establish the kingdom of Israel of peace and prosperity, I want to have something with it and from it. I'm going to have to join Jesus so that one day he might assign me to be the governor of Laguna. <laughs> or the mayor of Muntinlupa, or, or the, the prince of Egypt, the governor of Syria. In fact, Peter, in Acts chapter 1, just before Jesus went back to heaven, told Jesus, hey, is this the time that you will restore the kingdom to Israel? Why did he ask that question? Because he wanted power. He wanted power. All right, Jesus, now that you're alive again, <laughs> you're going to establish a kingdom. You will give me a position of power. And Jesus told him, it's not up to you. It's none of your business when I will establish the kingdom. But if you're asking for power, I will give you power. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and you will be my witnesses. Say witnesses. Yeah, you need power. And I will give you power, but not for the reason you want. <laughs> It'll be for something else. I want you to witness for me. The word witness in Greek is marturion or martyr. Yeah, you're not going to be prince of Egypt. You're not going to be governor of Syria. You're going to be a martyr for me. You're going to declare my word and my message to the rest of this world. You will continue my why. And in Acts chapter 2, we see... When the Holy Spirit came upon Peter, he did continue the why of Jesus. Say why. So we go back to the story. This short but very rich human being, the very, very hated person, the most hated person in their city, climbs up the sycamore fig tree and hears his name, Zacchaeus. Say Zacchaeus. Turn to your short neighbor and say Zacchaeus. If he saw, then say, hey, Goliath. Um, Zacchaeus, the very name. The name Zacchaeus means pure, innocent. But that's not who he was, was he? In the eyes of the people who were there, he was one of the greatest sinners. He was a traitor. But Zacchaeus... Here's his name called out by Jesus himself. 
The very reason Jesus was there was for him. Zacchaeus, you come down from there. And you know what I love about Jesus? Jesus calls us out by our name. Amen? He calls us out by our name, not by what people have branded us. You drive down the Anghari, and suddenly you get hit by a motorcycle, and your car gets dinged, and you are forever named Ding Dong. Right? You wreck your car once, and you're forever called Wreck-It Ralph. Some of us have been giving, given names and, and, and nicknames that, that reflect who have, we have become, but not necessarily who God sees us. God calls out Zacchaeus' name. And I believe Zacchaeus needed a reminder of what he can become in Jesus. Your name is pure, and you can be pure. You can be pure. He needed a reminder that his name meant that and how far away he had fallen away from that meaning. One preacher wrote this, when you know who you are, you know what to do. If you know that why you're a disciple and, and you, you, who you are as a disciple, you, know, you will know what to do. Verse 5 says, when Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down from there immediately. I must stay at your house today. Zacchaeus came down immediately. And he welcomed him gladly. The celebrity passing through the city of Jericho came there for Zacchaeus. If you read through the whole book of Luke, you will find this theme. The theme that Jesus came to seek and save the lost. And he's concerned with that one person, that one little sheep, that coin, that lost thing, that lost individual. It's all across the book. But in Luke chapter 15, we see a story, another story of the prodigal son whose older brother refused to attend his father's party for his younger brother who was found again. See, how the elder brother or the older brother reacted in the prodigal son story is how the other people in the story of, of Zacchaeus reacted. Really? The future Messiah, the Messiah of Israel, has come to be the guest of a sinner. You see, sometimes we behave that way, don't we? Oh, really? My, my former classmate, now a believer? I don't believe you. Let him prove that he is truly a believer in Jesus. We sometimes behave that way. One of my associate pastors in Canada spoke of a story one time where they had elders at the door in his former church. And that el those elders would check whether their Bible translation is the right one. And if you don't, you better get one that is right. There's another person on the other side who would check whether you're dressed well for the service. Why? That contradicts the teaching of Jesus, welcoming and loving all people regardless of how they look, how they dress, how they speak, how they smell. Everybody is welcome in the presence of God. Amen? Everybody is welcome. And so Jesus welcomes Zacchaeus, and Zacchaeus welcomes Jesus. A lot of people got angry, but that wasn't Jesus' concern. For him, he was concerned with a why. I've come to seek and save the lost. To seek and save the lost. Zacchaeus received Jesus. Jesus did not choose to stay at Zacchaeus' house because he was rich. But because he needed Jesus. Zacchaeus was rich, but he was empty. And Jesus knew that. See, 
just because one person looks like they got it all together. They have the right house. They have the right cars. They have the right job. That doesn't mean they don't need Jesus anymore. I come from the province of Alberta. A lot of people there work in the oil industry. And they get paid a lot of money. They have a lot of stuff. They have a lot of toys. But a lot of them are also lost and confused. We also have one of the highest rates of suicide. Just because you look like you got it all together doesn't mean you don't need Jesus. Even you, seated here, you might have been coming to church for the longest time. You may have grown up in church. This is the 22nd anniversary of GCF South Metro. Maybe you were born. Or maybe you were, you've started coming to this church even before you were born, you know. But maybe you haven't really, really discovered who Jesus is and the life that he offers. Zacchaeus, at this point, said these things. Verse 8, I will give half my wealth to the poor, Lord, and if I have cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. And Jesus said, salvation has come to this home today, for this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham. Now, don't get this passage wrong. Zacchaeus did not get saved because he gave half of his wealth away. He got saved and that is why he gave half of his wealth away. It was a response to his salvation. What he did was a response to his salvation. That's why Jesus said, he has proven to be the true son of Abraham. Abraham, the father of faith. Who obeyed because he got saved. Who obeyed because he believed. Do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe in Jesus? Do you obey Jesus? Then make disciples. Then multiply disciples. Then seek and save the lost. Because here's the thing. Jesus' why is to seek and save the lost. And if you are a believer in that, here's what you need to be doing too. you got to be seeking and saving the lost. His why should be your why. His why should be your why. Why are you saved? As Pastor Lito read from, from the book of Peter. So that we can point others to Jesus and glorify God. Your why is his why. And his why is your why. And so in verse 10, For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. This is why Jesus was sent. This is why he gave his life on the cross. This is why he went through Jericho so that... This one man named Zacchaeus could find life. Are there Zacchaeuses in your life that need Jesus? Don't wait for them to climb up a tree. <laughs> Get together with them. Share your faith with them. Love on them. And see how God works in their life. This is why we exist. As a church and as a family of churches, as disciples of Jesus, we point people to Jesus. His why is our why. Turn to your neighbor and say, his why is my why. His why is my why. Our mission is to reach people for Jesus. It's always easier to invite somebody who already goes to a different church, right? Oh, your band sounds terrible. Oh, my, my church has a great band. Come over. Oh, 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 your pastor preaches really long. Come over to my church. We have like 20 minutes. All right? Oh, you don't have small groups in your church? Come over to my church. We have a lot of small groups, you know, for, for hungry, for full, for, you know. It's easier. It's always easier to invite somebody who already believes. But the challenge is to invite, invite somebody or invest in somebody who has no clue who Jesus is. Those are the ones who need Jesus. Let me tell you a story of Justin. The story of Justin. Justin is a man in his, when, when he started coming to 
Mosaic Church, he was 29 years old. He was a drug addict. He was in a gang. And he was, he was living a crazy, not rich Asian life, but a really rich but, but empty Canadian way of life. <laughs> he had everything he needed, but his life was empty. And he got invited to Mosaic Church. And on that day, he showed up. He gave his life to Christ. We discipled him, we stood alongside him, we sat with him, walked through with him. From a life of misery and and degradation. In fact, he was on the, the, the headlines of our newspapers a couple of years ago because of gang violence. He now stands in our church as a worship leader. And he has been reaching out to his gang members And he has been able to, by the grace of God, lead three of his friends. Who among your friends need to know who Jesus is? This church has launched a a vision, a mission for each one to win one. Each one win one. Who are these Zacchaeuses in your life? This year, embrace your mission. Your why. The very reason Jesus saved you is to glorify him. And he is most glorified when you lead somebody to him. Jesus, his mission, his why, comes from the very heart of God. And what is the heart of God? To draw all people back unto himself. For those of you who know the story, we have fallen away. All of mankind. And Jesus was sent to seek and save all of mankind. And if you have been found by Jesus, your calling, your why, is to find. And when you evangelize, when you lead somebody to Jesus, and when you lead people to Christ this year, If you embrace that why of Jesus, here's what happens to you. You experience a full circle moment. Every time you lead somebody to Jesus, you experience a full circle moment. From lost to found to finding the lost. Is that something you would want to do for the glory of God? Jesus, here's the thing, has given you the power, the authority to do that already a lot of us are just intimidated by leading, but the leading or the, the, the intricacies of it. But you know what? All it takes is obedience. Say obedience. When Jesus flew back to heaven, he said, all authority has been given to me. Now go. <laughs> How do we go? We go in his authority. Don't say no for the people around you or for the people that you want to share the gospel with. A lot of us judge our friends that way, right? Oh, that for, yeah, we'll be praying. I don't think it's time yet. No, 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 no. How about you? You just obey God and share the gospel. Amen? He has authority and he gives you that authority to make disciples of all nations. And this is the same Jesus who overcome the grave who overcame sin, and who is seated at the right hand of God, interceding for you. He is the one who possesses the name that is above every name, the only name given under heaven by which man might be saved, the name of Jesus. Say Jesus. Let's stand to our feet and close with that song. Hey, let's sing that that part where it says, death could not hold you, and let's, let's stand to our feet. And let's just worship Jesus as we respond to the word. Let's stand to our feet. Let's stand to our feet and just declare that death could not hold you. The veil tore before you. You silenced the boast of sin and grave. This is the Jesus that has authority. This is the authority that you operate on. You operate on this authority. This resurrection power works inside of you. And so let us worship Jesus today. Let's sing death could not hold you. The veil tore before you. You silence the boast of sin and grave. Let's sing together. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. Death could not hold you. The veil tore before you. You silence the boast of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring. The praise of your glory.
Father God, we thank you for reminding us about the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. The name that redeemed us from our sin. The name that brought us out of darkness into your marvelous light. Thank you, Father, for reminding us of your great love for us. That while we were still in darkness, you sent your son Jesus on the cross to bring us to the light. Thank you for reminding us about why you have saved us. So that we will come into full circle and join you in seeking and saving the lost. Thank you, Father, for your goodness in our life. And as we look forward to the rest of this year, may you always remind us of our why. Every morning when we wake up, remind us, Father, of our why, of our mission, of our purpose. To seek and save the lost. Because if we know our why, life will make sense. Life will have a meaning. And we will experience the power of Jesus' promise that we will live life to the full. And Lord, we thank you for using Pastor John to minister to us in a very special way today. And all that we ask is that as he returns to Alberta, you will continue to use him to bring more people into your kingdom for your honor and for your glory. And it is our prayer for ourselves as well that we may live life living it to be pleasing to you because you are our God who deserve all honor and glory and power and blessing and honor and glory and might to you be glory forever and ever and God's people say